Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. This is Dave, and today we've got some uh, more juicy news. Ubisoft <laughs> is back into it, and Endymion is letting us know what the heck is going on within that company. And we are grateful to him, so please swing by his channel and give us some love. The link will be down below. I don't understand this company. Ubisoft is like this onion. It's just layers upon layers. And every time you peel one back, it's like just, <laughs> I don't know. It's like self-destruction, corporate espionage. Uh, I don't know. It is crazy. It is crazy. So anyways, let's just get to it. And um, let me know what you think down down below in the comments. All right, let's do it. Hey everyone, it's Endymion. I got some more information about things like Assassin's Creed Shadows in this video. By now, you all know the drill. I'll just tell you what I've been told by various sources. Beyond this, there's more stuff that's come out publicly like investment company citing exactly why they're pushing for Ubisoft to be dissolved and more. And places mm -hmm. like From Software, the makers of Elden Ring and Dark Souls are proving that the narrative that Ubisoft's higher ups are trying to pull are actually nothing but lies meant to hide their own incompetence. So, let's get into it. I've had a few new details given to me about Shadows and more. Firstly, I was told by another Ubisoft employee that the Tencent acquisition has been looming over Ubisoft like a shadow for a really, really long time now, well before all of this was happening. Wow. As I am being told, the claim is that Ubisoft knew well ahead of time that they were in financial ruin, and couldn't pull themselves out in a realistic manner, no matter what they did. Perhaps a financial miracle from a game release could have helped them, but it seems that upper management knew that there was virtually no way to save the company the way that it was going right now. This yeah, yeah, the way to save the company is to strip all the DEI stuff out of there and get some more qualified uh, men. I mean, I hate to say it. Uh, get a lot of these women that just frankly just to be brutally honest a lot of those women that are at ubisoft should not be at ubisoft or probably in the game industry to begin with so yeah this is where yasuke comes into place and again i've provided plenty of info already in my other videos that have turned out to be true as well I told you guys that Tencent was going to buy Ubisoft before even Insider Gaming reported on that. I told you that Yasuke was implemented due to Black Lives Matter and the riots of 2020, which I have a little more info on that as well, and I'll get into that later. But the fact here is that Ubisoft, according to what I'm being told, knew that Yasuke was going to be controversial no matter what. And they were using the implementation of this character into their game to steer the public reception of not only Shadows, but Ubisoft as a company in general towards a scenario that would actually lead to a buyout. Let See, that is the interesting thing. Like this is all being worked and manipulated behind the scenes to lower the value of Ubisoft. That is crazy that that was allowed to happen. Let me explain. As I was told, Tencent allegedly was a big pusher of Yasuke becoming the main character of Shadows. Ubisoft, of course, was considering the idea, but Tencent was really the ones that pushed that vision into reality. Allegedly, Yasuke was pushed because Tencent knew the inclusion of his character as the leading man in a Japanese assassins game would raise many eyebrows and cause public outcry. Of which, course. I mean, they're right, it did exactly that, and the discussion surrounding the game has not died down since for good reason. As I'm told, decisions like implementing Yasuke, which would lead to many boycotting the game, was something pushed by Tencent investors to purposely tank Ubisoft in order to weaken the company towards an acquisition. That is incredible that that was allowed to happen. And pretty scummy, actually, I think, at Tencent. But, I mean, also, like, pretty genius. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if they had their eye on the company, I mean, if they could, like, tank the stock and tank the value of the company and then swoop in and be like the savior of the calamity they created 
<laughs> that that actually is like dark genius right there. So I don't know. Business, uh, they you know, the strongest will survive, right? The weak will be eliminated. I don't know. Effectively leading to Ubisoft, as we know, becoming far weaker, worth far less than it should be, and placing itself plump and ready for Tencent to waltz in and swallow the entire company whole and obtain them. These accusations kind of sound ludicrous, I know. However, it seems there's more credence to this than we originally thought. AJ Investments, another investor who has publicly stated that Ubisoft must be sold off, has said in their official document that Tencent is responsible for all of this. Don't believe me? Well, let's pull up their official statement they released recently. The statement, which I'll share in the pinned comment in case you want to read it out, says by saying, the board of directors and members of committees Ubisoft Entertainment, Mr. E's Guimont, CEO and chairman, Tencent Holdings, Guimon Family Holdings, Ubisoft shareholders, a urgent call for strategic and structural changes at Ubisoft Entertainment. Wow. Dear members of the board, dear fellow shareholders, as a significant minority shareholder in Ubisoft Entertainment via AJ Investments and our partners, we are writing to express our deep dissatisfaction with the current performance and strategic direction of the company. The recent wow. quarterly results, which included the postponement of key games like Rainbow Six Siege and The Division into the 2025 lineup, and a lowered revenue outlook for the Q2 2024, have heightened our concerns about the management ability to deliver value to shareholders over the long term. Share price of Ubisoft has decreased by more than 40% over the last year, compared to rise of its competitors and indexes, this letter consists of following points. Take Ubisoft Jeez. private or allow it to sell it to strategic investors. Ubisoft's valuation, which we believe Ubisoft is great, is an undervalued company and should be worth between 40 to 45 euros per share. Wow. Our concerns about the future of this company with current management and directory, our proposals to increase value of Ubisoft for all stakeholders, allow take private process by PE firms or Guimont family plus Tencent at fair price, allow sale process as we are in discussion with investors to fight against Guimont family with so-called proxy fight, at extraordinary shareholder meeting, change of the current management, start hiring process of new CEO who will optimize the cost and studio structure for more agile and competitive company as Ubisoft should be. We will also use the French minority law to collect enough shareholders to start proxy fight and initiate sale process of Ubisoft Whoa. to increase shareholder value for all shareholders. Wow. They also said a lot more, so I'll repeat what they said in the document going forward, and I quote, we believe that Ubisoft is a great company developing, distributing, and selling video games. Ubisoft has long-standing history with providing great experiences for players all around the world. Their IP, such as Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Tom Clancy's, Just Dance, Crew, Rayman, and others, are extraordinary and can attract millions of players over time. However, we believe that Ubisoft at current valuation is deeply undervalued. The main reason why the valuation is so low compared to the peers is that Ubisoft at current state is mismanaged and shareholders are hostages of Guimont family members and Tencent who takes advantage of them. Management is focused on pleasing investors with beating quarterly results and not focusing on long-term strategy to provide exceptional experience for the gamers. Our company has extensive knowledge about the gaming industry and we were long-term shareholders in Activision Blizzard and we started our Ubisoft position a couple of weeks ago and are still adding to it. We cannot understand the decision-making process of current management that is focused on releasing multiple average games per year that wow. are harming Ubisoft's reputation amongst gamers' community instead of focusing to provide hit games within its exceptional franchise portfolio. Division Heartland, which was a very much expected game from the gamers, was also cancelled. Skull and Bones release was not a success. Prince of Persia Lost Crown was okay, but not very impressive as nobody talks about the game anymore. Rainbow Six is doing great. Nevertheless, franchises such as Rayman, Splinter Cell, Four Honored Watch Dogs are sleeping for years despite these games are loved by millions of players all around the world, end quote. As you can tell, yeah, the investment me. firms of disgruntled people who are losing literal millions due to Ubisoft's inability to make profit are now looking to start a proxy war in order to wrestle control of the company away from Ubisoft and most importantly, Tencent. But it gets even shadier, so I should read you more of this report, and I quote, the ongoing underperformance of Ubisoft is a cause for concern, especially considering the potential Ubisoft has with a strong portfolio of intellectual properties, such as Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six Siege, Far Cry, Tom Clancy, Star Wars, Avatar, and others. 
it is clear that the current management, led by the Gimod family and supported by Tencent, has not been able to unlock this potential or provide satisfactory returns to minority shareholders, retail investors, and pension funds that are invested in Ubisoft. Our concerns Number 1. The current strategic direction under the Gimod family leadership has led to repeated delays and missed opportunities which have resulted in significant financial underperformance. Share price of Ubisoft has decreased by more than 40% over the last year. We suggest that Ubisoft allow shareholders to vote for a new CEO and allow sale of the business to PE groups or let the Guimont led consortium to buy out minorities for fair price. Number hmm. 2. The control exercise in September 2022 by Tencent and the Guimont family has effectively blocked potential acquisitions and partnerships that could have been beneficial for the company and its shareholders. More recently, wow. in 2022, private equity firms such as KKR and Blackstone expressed interest in acquiring Ubisoft, but were unable to proceed due to existing agreements that prevent any single entity from gaining control without Guimont and Tencent's consent. This pattern of blocking wow. potential acquisitions has prevented much needed restructuring and revitalization that will benefit all the stakeholders of Ubisoft. Number 3. Same thing happened when Guimont Holding Company took money from Tencent in September 2022 at $80 Euro per share valuation what? and two months later acquired more than 3% stake for less than 19 euros per share. The deal with Tencent was made in order to prevent any future acquisition or takeovers that would make Ubisoft's operations more effective and agile against its competitors." End quote. So the narrative that is being written here by the investors of Ubisoft outside of the Guimont family in Tencent is that Ubisoft is unable to grow, unable to gain new acquisitions or partnerships with brands or anything else, and pretty much all growth for the company has completely been siphoned and pulled away by Tencent's iron grip on the company. The report shares more infographs allowing for an easier way of understanding just wow. how Tencent is effectively taking complete and utter control of the company over the past few years. The fact that the report ends where the other investors say in a joint statement, we believe that Guimont family and Tencent are discounting potential value of Ubisoft in order to buy more shares at lower valuation and eventually take full control of the company at heavily discounted valuation. We value the great work that has been done by the Guimonts over the decades, but now is time to move on and restart the business with a new shareholder approach and new management or CEO. They state at the end of this report that these other <laughs> investors outside of the Guimont family and Tencent, they have around 70% of the gross shares of Ubisoft. And wow. if they band together, Whoa. they want to basically buy out the other 30% that's owned by Tencent and the Guimont family. So when I tell you that the death of Ubisoft is a multi-pronged attack that has been going on behind the scenes for years at this point, I'm telling you, this is exactly what is happening. And these investors are only proving further what I've been saying to you all. The death of this company is due to the incompetence of Yves Guimont, the current CEO of Ubisoft, his family that founded the company originally, and the Chinese giant Tencent. And it's a long-winded destruction that has been going on for years now. So when I was told by sources recently that Yasuke was implemented in order to drum up buzz and in a sense self-sabotage the Assassin's Creed brand, it actually seems that this is becoming more and more the truth based on how their own investors are now accusing them of destroying the company from the inside out on purpose in order to acquire it outright for less money. It seems kind of unbelievable that it took this long for the investors to finally kind of realize what the heck was going on with the company. I mean, this is like straight out of a movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, that is so crazy. Well, man, power to the, to, to the, I, I mean, I, I don't know, like, because if Tencent ends up buying it, they're obviously going to make Ubisoft way stronger. But who knows if they're going to keep all of the IPs? They might just sell those things off uh, and, and make a, a <laughs> make a ton of money. Uh, I don't know. I mean, so the future of a lot of these franchises could be up in the air. I, I don't know. And um, yeah, it is really sad that uh, there that so many of their their games have been like just shelled. 
for whatever reason. Um, yeah, anyways. I can almost continue. guarantee you that once Tencent does buy Ubisoft completely, that the quality of their experiences will suddenly go up, and when compared to the games that Ubisoft has been making for the past few years, people will say that Ubisoft is in better hands with Tencent at the helm. But in a lot of ways, what Tencent is being accused of here is pretty much being the ones who torched your house to the ground, and then refused <laughs> to call the fire department to put it out, and then they suddenly show up a week later telling you that they'll rebuild your house if you pay them. I mean, it's a hell of a strategic move on their part, all things considered, effectively wow. saving money by purposely ruining your competition and then rotting them from the inside out by Gosh. telling them what to do. And Tencent's actions have bore fruit, as I said in a previous video, since Ubisoft has lost around 90% of their value since 2020 already. Wow. It's a lot easier to buy the whole company for a billion than it is to spend 10 billion or more instead. And I guarantee you yeah. that once Ubisoft is completely bought out, that suddenly the company, under Tencent's rule, will now be making all sorts of deals with their IPs that mm. they now own. It's mm -hmm. almost as if the entire destruction of Ubisoft was nothing but a fabrication instigated by a rival company. Wow. You can't really blame Tencent either, because what they did here is kind of actually genius on their part. Oh. After mm. all, this is how business and sabotage works. It's kind of like being at an African safari and then witnessing a lion eating a zebra. I mean, you could try to get between them and break them up, but eventually yeah. you just kind of have to accept that, hey, that's nature, and this is how these <laughs> things go. The strong will always devour the weak, and Ubisoft is definitely the weak one in this scenario. Yeah. Circling back to my sources, they told that's me that I the said. general consensus at Ubisoft by the employees working on Assassin's Creed Shadows was that they always knew that this game was doomed to fail no matter what. I was also told whenever employees would bring up glaring issues about shadows to management, the Tencent corruption, if you will, would swoop in and tell management to ignore the employees' claims. This is likely why the game was being reported as almost not getting a delay because employees' demands were falling on deaf ears. As I'm being told by employees who are working on not only shadows but other games, it wow. seems that Tencent wanted Shadows to come out in November, knowing full well that the game was subpar quality at best. Because this would lead to the narrative that the game is bad, the company is incompetent, and the sales yeah. and low review scores would lead to a campaign in order to wrestle control of Assassin's Creed wow. as an IP away from Ubisoft entirely. But the sobering, defeating truth here is that no matter what the outcome would be, ultimately, Tencent would always come out on top. The game could hit in November, and Ubisoft would be ruined. Now it comes out in February, likely because the outcries had to be subdued within the company, so Tencent just allowed it. It's going to be pushed back farther than February, I think. I think that's almost a guarantee. And as I'm being told, these delays won't fix much of anything that will save this game. Because like Outlaws as well, Shadows is just being geared up to be sent out to die. Kind of like a kamikaze plane in World War II, the people who are working on this game know that ultimately, it's just a package that will capsize the publisher into financial oblivion on purpose. Could the player save Ubisoft by buying Shadows? Maybe, but I doubt it. I think Tencent knows once the game comes out, people won't really buy it anyway. And then once Shadow bombs, it will then spell the ultimate end of Ubisoft. And once it's weak, bleeding out like a zebra, the lion, that is Tencent, will finally have its fill and gorge itself on the remains. I was also told that Shadows has had the longest dev cycle of any previous game in the series, and this is not because of things like animations or engine restraints. According to my sources, anyway... Yeah, because they've totally, like, changed everything about it. They did all that research, sent people to Japan. I mean, who knows how far they got into the actual development process with the original, you know, stories and stuff that they were going to do. And then this mandate to throw in Yasuke and... Oh, man. Oh, gosh. this oh, That would be heartbreaking if you were an Ubisoft employee that really loved the company and loved the games that you were making to see this, this happen, this slow death, the death of a thousand cuts, you know? It's, oh, it just, it, it, it's, it's, it makes my heart like just sink a little bit, you know, because Ubisoft was such a huge, huge 
impact in, in, in the gaming industry and in people's lives, you know? I remember the first time I, I, I ever played Assassin's Creed, the first one. It was just like, it, it, it was like mind blowing, you know? It was like, oh my gosh, look at all the stuff you could do. It was beautiful. Anyways, uh, it's sad. Shadows largely reuses assets and animations from previous Assassin's Creed games of plenty. The game had no business taking as long as it did to be developed, but it's a Molotov cocktail of poor company oversight being poisoned by a competitor wearing the clothing of an ally, and a worker base that is purposely being filled to the brim with activist DEI hires. Mm. One look at photos of Ubisoft in its prime versus... Now that, in my experience, would be a typical shot of a game studio. And like, you know, that woman, I don't know who she is. She was probably, I, I would guess, they probably had her as a producer. That other woman over there on the left, she could have been a producer, but she was probably more on the development side. Maybe she was like animation or maybe she was a designer. I don't know. But a vast majority, I mean, just from the shot, it's like 90% guys. And, and, and at this point, even the women, anybody in this studio, they were qualified to do the game, okay? And that's why they were there, because they were the best. And that's, that's why they, they thrived, okay? And now let's, let's take a look at what they're doing now now tells you everything that you kind of need to know. <laughs> yeah. The company is currently wah, overwhelmed wah. by activist developers from the ground level to the very... That's why they failed. That's the biggest reason why they fail. And I'm not, like, against ladies in the industry, okay? So don't, don't hate the player. <laughs> hate the game, right? That is just... That's a train wreck right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's, a, it's an absolute train wreck uh my gosh top i already reported on how ubisoft has a terrible work atmosphere and a lot of the most important tasks within the company are being handled by outsourced contractors mostly it's simply because the actual talent is not seasoned enough apparently based on what i'm being told yeah i got employees how telling me that their co-workers have look there are not a lot of women that i mean maybe it's changing i don't know it's been a little while since i've been at a studio but traditionally there's just not a lot of women going into gaming right they they were there but 90 percent of a studio would be guys it's just how it was and how it still is it's just like you don't have like a ton of women becoming bricklayers or something you know because it's just not something that an average woman would have a desire to do uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then that creates all the toxic positivity. And that's just a down, downward spiral from there. I don't know. Have no business being in the industry whatsoever based on the interaction that they've had with these devs. And I even had two sources tell me they could have most of their teams fired and gone and development wouldn't be changed one bit for the most. Yeah, that's exactly what happened when Elon Musk took over Twitter. He like, I think it was like, what, 40% of the company? It might have even been higher than that. I don't know the exact percentage, but he got rid of like half of the company, maybe even more. And guess what? There wasn't even a hiccup in, in X now. <laughs> I still have trouble calling it X. But it runs just fine. It, it ran just fine. And they got rid of like half the company. Why? Because of DEI hires, people that really didn't belong there. They didn't have the skill set. They didn't have the talent. And they were just a waste of, of space, basically. Sucking on the teat of the company because of woke policies. And I, I'm, I guarantee you that that picture we saw before, over half of those uh, people, now they just happen to be ladies, but half of those people could be gone. 
and the, the, the studio would actually be better for it. Most part. Though bloat at Ubisoft, which is a prevailing problem across the board for many publishers, is a self-inflicted wound of their own making. And I was also told that there was indeed a Japanese male protagonist main character at one point that was yeah. attached to Shadows. Before, I stated it was a character named Taka Yamauchi. Turns out that character, which was discarded when it came to Shadows development, actually ended up getting implemented into another experience. Okay, wow. Taka Yamauchi appears in Assassin's Creed Memories, a game made for iOS mm -hmm. devices, but like I said, this character was supposed to be your main character in Shadows originally. The timelines also, they mm. line up based on what I was told by the sources who worked on this character and more too. Like I told you, Shadows has the longest dev cycle of any game in the series. It's close to 10 years at this point, if not even longer. That is crazy. 10 years to be dumping money into this game. Whoa. That is just... I was also told that another character was being considered for the main role in Shadows before they were quickly discarded in favor of Yasuke instead. As I was told by sources, this character was meant to be the Assassin's Creed version of Miyamoto Musashi. As my source put it, they weren't sure if the new character that was being considered as the lead was going to be Musashi himself, since historically Musashi was born two years after Odu Nobunaga died which means technically mm. implementing a 20-something-year-old Musashi would still work, and he could have used Nobunaga's death as an opening scene that sets the stage for the corruption that is created by Akechi Mitsuhide. And of course, Yasuke could have still showed up just in a supporting role like Da Vinci in Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah, but, you know, I, I don't understand why in this particular game, and I, I don't know, I've kind of lost track of some of the uh, more recent games, but it seems they're going out of their way to try to fit actual historical figures into this game when their formula from the beginning was to have a fictitious character protagonist, but set I mean, I'm assuming it's the, the, the environment, the land, the country that they live in is as accurate as they could make it, right? I mean, but they always used fictional main character in a real world environment. And that is the formula that has worked perfectly. Like you said, um, in Assassin's Creed 2, I think it is, right? In Italy, set in Italy, uh, the protagonist en was Enzio or en Enzo? En Ezio? <laughs> I can't remember. It's been a while. But, like, yeah, he, he interacts with, uh, with Da Vinci. So, mm. or is it Michael? Is it Da Vinci or Michael? Anyways, yeah. But so, yeah, like, have him, have him be with, like, real character, like, real world historical characters. But don't make the main character a historical character because, like, then that causes a whole headache of problems. However, I don't think making Musashi, who was considered Japan's greatest swordsman as an assassin, would really work either. Yeah. Because yet again, this would fall into the same issue as Yasuke as well. What I mean by this is that yeah. Assassin's Creed games should never actually star real historical people ever. <laughs> Because we obviously have historical records of what these people did <laughs> during their lives in That's many of these saying. different time periods. The same way I don't want Yasuke as the main character in Shadows would be the same if, say, George Washington was the main character in Assassin's Creed 3. That's exactly my point. Because everybody, every single American and people even around the world would be like, uh, that doesn't even make sense. Like, <laughs> like... There would be no way that George Washington be, could be doing everything that he did in his actual life, plus <laughs> be part of this underground uh, assassins group uh, killing people left and right. I, I don't know. That, that would be that'd be crazy. Over Connor. Realistically, making Washington an assassin would be ludicrous because the guy was too tied up in war and politics. To really have any time to be running on rooftops, you know, stabbing people and such. And obviously the citizens of America at the time would no doubt recognize if George Washington of all people was running around with a hood on his head. It's always safer yeah. and far more reasonable to just make a fictional assassin as your hero in yeah. your historical game. 
It also allows for that gray area to be explored, and it doesn't mean that the character can't interact with historical figures. I mean, Bayek met Cleopatra in Origins, Ezio with Da Vinci, or like I said, Washington with Connor, it always works. But the moment they make a historical figure oh, yeah, the true. hero, it unravels it all very quickly. Yasuke doesn't work in this way, nor would Musashi, since we know his life and his fate. Although having a character inspired by Musashi could maybe work, which is also what my source was saying since they weren't 100% sure if right. Musashi was the lead originally or was just an inspiration for this new character that they also axed. However, regardless, the idea of this Musashi-like hero was quickly tossed aside based on what I'm hearing. And then, of course, 2020 happened, and then during it, it led to an internal discussion where Yasuke was officially chosen. Apparently, a majority of the team working on Shadows, they don't even know exactly why Yasuke was even chosen in the first place. Management just kind of told them that this is what they were doing, and that was it. And likely, if you challenged the idea, it was akin to insubordination, and well, you know how that goes usually. Yeah, and when you're on a development team, that, I mean, that would be the most frustrating aspect of all this, that you're just told by upper management to do something you know is not going to work, and it's going to be horrible, it's going to be a train wreck, it's going to do a lot of negative things to the game, and yet, if you want to keep your job... You, you have to do it. Ah, that's such a horrible position to be in. Of course, none of this news I've relayed to you is very good considering, so naturally Ubisoft is still running damage control. For example, they recently stated that the Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag remake, which is currently called Codename Obsidian in-house, is closer than people really think. Do I think the That'd remake be cool. will be good? Honestly, I don't think so, because current day Ubisoft remaking a game starring a white, straight, English pirate guy? <laughs> you really think they're not going to pull some shenanigans somehow? They'll find a way to add a gender-neutral bathroom to the jackdaw somehow. I really would not be surprised yeah. at this point. But yeah. they likely got that info out to try to sweeten the bad news surrounding their company so people could gain some goodwill back with Ubisoft. But I, for one, I'm not holding my breath. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised by the time Black Flag Remake releases that it'll have a big fat Tencent logo when you load up the game at this point. Mirage is also coming to Steam as well soon, yet again a desperate attempt to shift the narrative from mm. the misfires to make people more susceptible to Ubisoft. Mirage, by the way, has little to zero DI in it. I played the game myself, yeah. but this isn't surprising since the game takes place in Baghdad. It's full of Muslim religion stuff considering where it takes place. So Ubisoft yep. would never dare to anchor that group of people for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, totally, because they don't want <laughs> crazy... Guys are going uh, all, uh, uh, you know, religious on them and uh, bombing their headquarters and stuff like that. Eee. So there's no pandering in it besides maybe a strong female mentor character, I guess. Eh. This toxic positivity that is ruining these publishers is biblical at this point, and they'll tell you it's because games aren't selling and that they're too expensive. Yet, of course, there's places like From Software, the makers of Elden Ring and Dark Souls, which have recently upped their salaries for all of their employees by around oh, wow. 12%. So you tell me, is it that games are too expensive and people aren't buying them? Or could it be the reason why you're failing is because you're making slop that nobody wants to buy in the first place? Remember that Shadow of the Earth Tree for Elden Ring sold five times the copies of Outlaws in a week compared to Outlaws in a month. Just let that Man. sink in, fellas. A DLC sold more than a $300 million open-world Star Wars game. The only wow. reason why they fail is because they're making slop that nobody wants to play or buy, and it's yes. not really a money issue on players' ends. Exactly. Finally, I want to just quickly point out that Ubisoft's stock has actually raised by 30% since the talks of the Tencent buyout. That's Ubisoft's interesting. Ubisoft's shares went from 1077 euros to around 14 euros since these stories have broke. Apparently, that 30% increase happened within one hour of that news coming out officially. Wow. So if you have any money to spare, some people at least are buying Ubislop stock on the cheap, hoping <laughs> that when they go private and Tencent <laughs> buys them outright, that the investors uh, will then make funny. more in a short period by doing this. I am not giving you financial advice, however. I'm just letting you guys know is all. But to Thanks. summarize, Miyamoto Musashi was considered at one point to be the hero of the game, Yasuke was pushed allegedly by Tencent of all things to spark controversy and force Ubisoft into a situation 
where they could form a future where the company would then be bought for dirt cheap. The developers behind the scenes have absolutely no faith in Shadows at all. They know that they're sending this game out to die. Their own investors are now accusing Tencent of corporate meddling and are demanding answers as everything burns around them. I'll let you know what I know more as wow. things come out. This video will arrive on a Monday, which is perfect because that means the weekday has officially begun now. Hopefully these Ubisoft sources get back to me now that they have access again. We'll see what happens. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Thanks to my supporters and I'll see you soon enough. All right. So, I mean, is Tencent, are they the villains? Kind of? Or are they the heroes? I don't know. It would be interesting. I mean, I don't know how you could do it, but like if Tencent never like got involved seemingly in taking down Ubisoft, like would Ubisoft have been tanking the last few years the way they have? Or is that just inevitable because of bad management to begin with and Tencent's involvement it was just, you know, gasoline on the fire, I guess uh anyways well hey listen i appreciate uh appreciate you watching if you like my reactions uh consider subscribing like the video share it hit the bell do all that jazz all right well until uh the next video which i will hopefully see you at uh have a great day stay safe and we'll catch you later bye